Hi everyone, I'm Linda Liu from lindalewcreates.com and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you two fun and fabulous rainbow background cards using two different techniques. These techniques can be done with products you probably already have in your craft room. I'm also going to highlight stamp sets from Stampin' Up! that are on the retiring list. You better get them from my online store before they're gone for good. Um, I'll include a link to my store down below in the description, so be sure and check out that list. Now, for the first technique I want to show you, here are the two cards, first of all, and I'm going to start with this one. This first technique really is just using your stamps to create the rainbow background. So, the stamp that I'm using is from the Touches of Texture stamp set. It's a, a two-case stamp set, and um, it's this long, lacy stamp that I decided to use. So, let's get started. Let me set this off to the side. The supplies you're going to need for this card are an oval. I used one of the stitched shape ovals with a coordinating scallop layer out of basic black. Uh, that is out of the layering ovals uh, framelits there. Also, I just have a piece of scrap uh, Coastal Cabana. It's going to be what we're going to stamp and then die cut out with the teacup. Okay, my card base is Thick Whisper White. It measures four and a quarter by eleven. I've scored and then folded it five and a half. Now for the top two layers, the Whisper White is five by three and a quarter. And I like my layers to be thin, um, so I just go one eighth of an inch bigger uh, with my bottom layer then. So that makes this one five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. Okay, so tell you what, since it's right here, let's go ahead and do the teacup real quick. I'm just using Bermuda Bay ink. The teacup actually comes from the stamp set Time for Tea. Um, this was one of the stamp sets that I bought first thing out of the catalog. Uh, it has coordinating dies also. Let me show you those. They're right here, and they're called Spot of Tea. And um, it's this teacup then die that you're going to run through your Big Shot or whatever die cutting machine you have and cut out the teacup. So. All I did, ink it up, stamp it down, and then that I'll run through the big shot, which, to save some time, I already did. So right here it is, and I even put a couple uh, dimensionals on the back. So that's ready to go. Okay, so let me just close that up. Now, for the actual background itself, Yes, we're creating a rainbow. So let me pull in the inks that I used on this card. All right, we have Poppy Parade, Mango Melody, Daffodil Delight. Might as well start opening them. Now, for this card, you can see I've used six, and I'll show you the rest of the colors here in a second. Depending on the spacing of your card, or of your stamps, rather, you might only get five in there. So let me just show you that I went with the green, the Granny Apple Green, Coastal Cabana, and if you need the sixth one, I don't know if I'm going to get all of these in the shot, I use Gorgeous Grape. So let me just set Gorgeous Grape off to the side. That's the uh, excuse me, six colors that I used here on this card. Um, on a practice one that I did, I spaced it out a little bit further, so I only got five colors on it. And I think it looks just fine with five. Now, I also went diagonal with my, my uh, stamps. Today, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna try going straight across. So let's see what we got. So I like to start kind of in the middle. So for me, that was the yellow, so the Daffodil Delight. Let me ink that up. And I'm going to try going straight across. Okay. Then, of course, clean your stamp off in between. 
Now it doesn't matter if you go up or down, whichever direction of colors you want to go. So let me go with the granny apple green. Now this lacy stamp has a bit of a pattern or direction to it, I think. So I try and stay in that same direction. Okay, so there's the granny apple green. Let me go above now with what I'm going to call orange, but I'll tell you what, it's, it's fairly close to the yellow. So this is the mango melody. So we'll go up above with that one. Let me sneak the poppy parade in there too. So it's looking pretty good going straight across, I think. Let me know which way you like it better, if you like the straight across stripes or if you like them going diagonal. And then let's see. I'll try for the fifth one. I don't know if I'll have space then for the to put the sixth one in. And like I said, it all depends on how much you've spaced them apart. So I'm going to leave it with just the five colors then. So there's my rainbow background. Okay, so let me push these ink pads off to the side. And we're going to go ahead and mount this piece onto our background. onto that basic black. This can then actually then get put onto the card base. So let me hurry up and do that too while I'm here. I have a bad habit of uh, pushing stuff off to the side and then it's gone for good. Now my card base, make sure you just put the red at the top so that we're in our rainbow order. Okay, now let's get on to the oval. I am going to stamp a sentiment also from the Time for Tea stamp set. It's this one here, Warmed with Love, Steeped in Friendship. Now with that, I'm going to use the Memento Black. And go ahead and get that stamped. For the sake of time, I would go ahead and, and attach it to the black, which I've already done. Also applied some uh, dimensionals onto the back of that as well. So now I have my oval. So let's go ahead and put the card together here. Get those, uh, get the oval put down. If you have problems with the dimensionals not uh, releasing the paper, sometimes you can just use your fingernail and kind of break the, uh, the the grip, so to speak, that it has uh, with a paper to this, the uh, sticky side, and that'll help them peel up quicker, like this. So just kind of squish your fingernail into it, and that kind of releases that backing paper there, so. Okay, so the teacup, I'm just gonna fit that right down here. Now, I have the Share What You Love Artisan Pearls. These two are going to be or on the retired list. So make sure if you're interested in those that you pick those up. I am gonna go with this darker color here. Kind of blends in and here's card number one. Inside I got, I uh, stamped the teacup again in the Bermuda Bay. The sentiment on the inside is actually out of the Occasions catalog is this strong and beautiful set. I really like this. Some very, very nice supportive statements are in, in this one. So I did this. I cherish you, my true friend. I know I can always count on you. So card number one. And then this time, like I said, going straight across. I don't know. Kind of like them both. They both have their own little personality. So card number one with the rainbow background. Card number two. I'm using the stamp set on this one that I bought. It took me a while to get it inky, and when I did, I haven't been able to stop. So um, this one is called Flowering Desert, and this one too is out of the uh, Occasions catalog. I'm not a good scene builder, so I think that's why I kind of hesitated, but once I did it, I was like, this is fun. So with this card 
we are going to pull those ink colors back in. Let me move some things around here. And we're going to use, we're going to do an ink blending technique. So I'm going to use my sponge daubers. I'm also going to show you here the different things, the different supplies also that you will need. Just a piece of scrap for the sentiment that's on the front. I used one of the stitched rectangle uh, dies to cut out this piece of Whisper White, and it measures approximately two and five eighths by four, I believe, is what this one measures about. And then again, because I like my mats to be just a little bit bigger, um, it's just an eighth of an inch bigger than uh, with the, the basic black here. I have my same um, measurements for this one as far as is the same as with the first one where this measures uh, five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. And the Whisper White is all ready to go on my stencil and it measures five by three and three quarters. What I'm using to create the background is the Pattern Party Decorative Masks. All I did was lay my piece of Whisper White kind of face down, just attached it with the two little pieces of, of washi tape to hold it in place, and then I'm good to go there. So let's go ahead, quickly make the background, and it's just some fun sponging. Now I gotta say, I'm a little heavy handed when it comes to sponging. I have to um, kind of force myself to go a little bit lighter um, and so we'll try all right once again because of the card that the original card it goes in a diagonal pattern maybe I'll be brave with this one too and try it going horizontal so we'll see again I'm gonna start with my yellow the middle color so I like to just ink it up rub it in and just kind of pat it out off on my scrap paper and just in a circular motion apply my color okay and like I said you can always come back and add more color now let's go with the orange the mango melody tap it off a little bit now I'm gonna go above the yellow but I'm also going to blend into the yellow so that's where the ink blending comes in all right Poppy Parade, the red. Let's get that inked up. Okay, and again, circular motion. Apply it to your cardstock, but then also make sure that you're blending it down and into that layer below, that mango melody. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I'm coming down. Granny Apple Green. some of that down always remembering to blend into the color that is above or below it and then my very last color the coastal cabana I think I got it all now. I like to make sure I'm in all those little nooks and crannies, especially on the corners or the ends of the cardstock. Sometimes they sneak on you. All right, let me push these pa ink pads out of the way and the daubers because now comes the fun tech, the fun part of this, the big reveal. So go ahead and carefully remove. I know sometimes some of my the cardstock will uh, peel off, but that's okay. Um, with the washi tape and the big reveal. Let's turn this around. And uh, you know what? I kind of like it going across this way too. So, all right, here's our background with the using the ink blending technique. So let me set this aside. We're gonna get ready to do a little bit of stamping now. So I'm gonna pull out that rectangle and get going on First, I like to start with the cactus. It's the biggest uh, biggest image. So let's stamp that first. 
And because I'm adding my sentiment near the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this up closer towards the top. So it's gonna look a little uneven at first, but it'll all even out once we apply that sentiment then. So there's that fun cactus. This has sort of that distressed uh, look to it, so it's not gonna be a solid image then. So, um, next up are the pieces of the cactus that are done in Coastal Cabana. So, here we go. First one. Okay, stamp one. And yes, that white spot is supposed to be there. So don't freak out on that. <laughs> then the second piece to this. And now it comes time for some of the little filler pieces. So, this little sprig, I don't know if you can see that very good. It, I used the uh, Mango Melody for that, and I just stamped it a couple times, just kind of filling in here. It's nice to uh, be able to see through and be able to line it up where you want it. Okay. And it's okay if you go off the paper whenever you stamp, that's okay too. So let me get one more in here. And let me see if I can fit even one more down here. This one might not show up very much because of the sentiment layer, so we'll see. Uh, oh, I almost forgot the little flower then that goes on the cactus too. That I did in the poppy parade. So ink that up and right on the side it goes. So there's the scene. There's our cactus scene. <laughs> this will get mounted onto then our black layer. and some dimensionals on the back of that. Yeah, I, I do like my dimensionals, so uh, don't be surprised if you see a whole bunch getting put on, so. One more. All right, that's good to go. Um, my sentiment uh, also came, again, from this strong and beautiful set from the Occasions catalog. Thank you for always being there for me. So I stamped it on a piece of scrap white, cut it out, and mounted it onto a piece of black cardstock then that was just a little bit, just an eighth of an inch uh, wider than that. So let me go ahead and get that adhered down to my cactus here. And, uh, you know, if you goof up or don't like the way it's looking down here, then that's how you hide it, by putting your sentiment right over top of it. All right, so there we go. We have our piece of, I think I, let me mount this onto the black. I don't know why I thought I already did, but I did not. <laughs> so we'll put this onto the black. And that down. This will go on to our card base. Must be time for a refill on that. Now while you have are building your scene of your cactus for the front of the card, don't forget about the inside of your card. I put that on the inside as well, the same uh, cactus layout, so to speak. So make sure you get the inside of your card or even your envelope too. You might like to have your envelope decorated that way also. All right, let's go ahead and get the, the main part down. I think the black really helps to pop this out and let you really see all those bright happy colors of the rainbow then behind in your background so let me get the last of these off pop this on and there we go i'm going to pull back in those pearls and get those mounted on i'm going to go with the yellow this time so let's see one right here 
Uh, how about right there? And another one down here. All right. And there is my second rainbow background card. Bright, happy. Uh, these can be used for any occasion. I just think they make fun cards. Someone would be happy to, to, uh, to receive those. Like I said, down in the comments, let me know which one you prefer, whether it is the diagonal stripes on this one, the straight stripes, same thing here, going diagonal, oops, horizontal on that one or diagonal here. So um, this one, I feel like I was a little heavier handed with the ink. This one's a little softer. So um, yeah, those are the cards for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. Let me know what you think. Don't be afraid to stop by my blog. I will have these cards posted there as well. And um, I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much for sharing some of your time with me. Bye now.